So you factor in the Huawei, you factor in the trade stuff. How do you, how does that lay into your buy rating and your price? I mean, we're rating? already having concerns because exiting last quarter, Tim Cook talked about the fact that improving relationships with China was increasing sales in China at the end of the quarter and into this quarter. So now, if you see there's more battles and the media in that country is, is saying very negative things about the U.S., you have to be concerned about the number of phones that, or the number of iPhones specifically, that um, that are gonna be sold in China for this quarter. So this is, if this thing goes on, that's, that's just the, the starting point. Now on top of that, Ch uh, Apple becomes potentially a very large target uh, in a trade war. Obviously, that was a great interview that Bloomberg had, and I think um, the founder also mentioned that he would recommend against having a ban on, on iPhones in, in China. That's a positive sign, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that is not a risk that is off the table just because the founder of Huawei says that. he would be against it, right? So, so how do you factor that into your buy rating and your price target? We just have to watch this day by day. It's it's interviews like that over the weekend and, and what the latest tweet is from the president or you know any of the other, other news stories. In the meantime, you take a look at, okay, look, if they sold fewer phones in China this quarter, maybe Apple performs at the lower end of the guidance range. Mm -hmm. And then numbers come down for future quarters. If, be, if it becomes a more probable risk of a some type of, of tariff in the U.S., which is a big chunk of, of, of Apple's revenue um, or a ban, then that's going to be a more dramatic impact on earnings and, and the valuation. Now remember, Apple stock since these since the quarter when things were good has was trading at, at par with the market and now it's come back to a 20 percent discount. So some of this has has actually already priced itself into the into the valuation of Apple. They obviously have a big share repurchase program. They're going to buy 20, 25 billion dollars of stock every quarter. So they're taking advantage of some of the volatility in the market. That actually helps earnings to a certain extent. But really, investors just need to keep their eye on on what might be a more dramatic reaction by the Chinese government. So that's sort of focusing on uh, iPhone sales in China. What about supply chain issues and sort of how much uh, Apple can pass on the price to consumers, say, here in the U.S. or elsewhere? Elsewhere. So if the U.S. apply the 25% tariff to phones coming out of China into the mm -hmm. U.S., then that's obviously going to be an impact. And, and as the previous guest um, talked about, it's not easy for Apple to move their manufacturing. I have other companies that are making modems, and they can do that in a quarter or two. But these are high-precision products. There's a million-plus people uh, in China making these products, so it would take some time. I think there was some news reports last week where Tim Cook's already talking about using Pegatron and perhaps Indonesia. This is his expertise, supply chain. So this is what one of the reasons he was selected as the CEO of Apple. So we'll see the moves that he makes, but again, it can't be something that they do overnight.